Yes. Hi, I'm Michael Linowitz, and thank you for joining us here for another Facebook Live here at uh, D'Alessio Law Group. I'm in the BD department. I also do the videography. And I have Paul Altman here, one of our top tier case managers from Australia. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing very well, mate. How are you? Good, good. Really happy to have you again. Thank you. Happy to be here. Paul's great. Uh, so <laughs> today we're going to talk a little bit about the L1 visa. Um, for people who don't know, could you give us a little brief run through on what the L1 visa is? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's essentially um, a visa for multinationals. Um, and by that, I don't necessarily mean just your Microsofts and your Googles, but like if you basically have a company abroad and you have a qualifying relationship with the company in the United States, you're able to transfer employees between the, the two companies. You're able to transfer from the overseas entity to the US entity. Um, with some strings attached. Uh, for example, like the employee that you're trying to transfer must have been working for the company for at least one year in the last three years, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and this is generally a managerial positions, executive yeah, positions. Uh, yeah, exactly. Hit the nail on the head. Uh, basically, there are two arms to it, either an executive or managerial capacity or a specialised knowledge capacity. Um, the second one can sometimes be difficult to prove. Uh, the first one, if you directly manage people, that's ideal. You can also, um, if you don't directly manage people, you can also qualify if you manage an essential function, essentially, of the, uh, of the business. But, uh, nice. And yeah. now let's say, hypothetically, let's say, uh, you know, I'm going to be someone who's going to be coming on an L1. Uh, let's say if I have some family, well, how, how would that apply? How, is there a pull yeah, for that? Like, there is, yeah. If you have uh, your, your spouse... Mm -hmm. um, and or children um, can qualify for L2 visas. Mm. Um, the spouse even uh, can then, once they're in the United, approved and in the United States, an L2 status can apply for a, an employment authorization document, which uh, once approved actually ironically gives the spouse more latitude to do what he or she would like to do Wonderful. than the employee who's tied to the company. So uh, it's a nice little quirk of the system. So let's say hypothetically, I'm um, you know I'm getting an L1, but uh, there is not necessarily a location so far established for the company I work for. Is there, what, what's the situation there exactly? Yeah, no, excellent question, particularly in the current environment. So if you do have a company overseas, uh, but no presence in the United States, mm -hmm. um, you can use the L1 to establish what's called like a new office, uh, like a subsidiary, whatever the qualifying relationship may be in the United States. Um, and traditionally, um, companies have used that. It's a good vehicle. Uh, especially if the company is, you know, doing well mm -hmm. uh, overseas, you can kind of, you have in the past been able to kind of rely on the financial viability of the company overseas, its health in setting up the, uh, the new office. Um, and the government has been, you know, good at being able at uh, approving co those companies for a period of one year. And then towards the end of the first year, you have to submit information again to show that whatever you were planning to do in that first year to launch the company right. has actually been successful. That makes sense. But... A little word of warning, we have started oh. in, in recent times under, um, under the Buy American, Hire American policy, we've started seeing a lot of heavy scrutiny of these new office scenarios. Yeah. So definitely anybody who is considering opening a new office in the United States of their existing company should uh, come to us for some uh, sage advice oh, okay. um, because yeah, up DLG. there are lots, yeah, lots of little uh, nuances and quirks uh, under the new administration who are really, uh, you know, uh, scrutinizing those applications heavily now. Hmm. All right. So as a final, as a final note, maybe some final advice. Uh, maybe what the L one could do, how it could be used as an alternative. What would you like to say to the people out there? Yeah, I mean, if you're basically looking uh, for any kind of investor visa into the United States, as I say, establishing a new company, there are always uh, different options potentially. So as opposed um, to like an E2 or something like yeah, that? Yeah, precisely. Oh. You're, you're, you're on the money there. Mate. Yeah. Um, E2 is another option. But uh, as I say, L1 does have its advantages. And, uh, you know, it's just a question of weighing up what is going to fit your uh, your situation the best. Cool. Oh, Paul, that was really great. I love having you. Thanks, This man. was really it's fun. It's a pleasure. Thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, tune in next week. Uh, maybe we'll have Paul again if we're lucky. Oh, if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs>